Why do some people commit immoral acts or wrongdoings? Is it because of money? Is it because of their pride and ego? And why do others who are mistreated decide to look the other way or refuse to confront them? Is it because they're not aware of how they deserve to be treated? Or is it because they're victims of the working class and wealth is the only way to display one's power? So is the case of Sato Yamanaka's Humanity in Paper Balloons, a film that dives into the world where the working class is looked down upon, where wealth seems to be the only source of empowerment. This is a grounded claustrophobic film that manages to capture the hardship the poor have to go through and the different ways one tries to deal with such a situation. However, I wish the film would go slightly beyond stating the obvious and dive deeper into its message. Humanity and Paper Balloons takes place in the slum during the Edo period in Japan. We mainly follow two characters who live within the slum, a hairdresser who is a gambling addict and tries to regain his pride after getting involved with samurai officials, and a ronin who hopes to be hired by a high ranking official who is his deceased father's former master. Both of them will come to realize, no matter what, it will be impossible for them to amalgamate with the higher class due to their place within the marginalized society. Saru Yamanaka, director of this film, is known as the leading figure when it comes to the early development of Japanese cinema. Known for his focus on social injustice, Yamanaka has made over 27 films over the span of 6 year period. However, only 3 of them have survived, and one of them is Humanity and Paper Balloons, making it a frustrating loss for cinema. From just this film alone, I could tell Yamanaka had an immense amount of potential. The way he managed to weave its minimalistic story together with its diversified characters with such grace and elegance really made him stand out from his peers. Sadly though, another massive tragedy struck. Yamanaka died at the age of 28 due to inflammation in the intestine, shortening what could have been a fruitful career. Nevertheless, his legacy lives on as his ideas and concept continue to prosper through storytelling legends like Akira Kurosawa. Yasujiro Ozu, influencing Japanese cinema as we know it today. Not only did he leave his mark on Japanese cinema, but Hollywood as well. I recently just found out that one of my favorite romantic comedies from the golden age of cinema, It Happened One Night, was also influenced by his works. His mark is no doubt reverberated across the globe and can still be seen celebrated today. I'm so glad I got a copy of this film and now I'll be able to join a celebration as well. The film begins with local thugs entering a claustrophobic slum, hoping to inquire about the recent death of a samurai. Right away, we're introduced to the cramped environment where there seems to be little space for one to maneuver. Within the first few minutes of the film, you can tell that humanity and paper balloons is not going to end on a happy note, as you watch locals try to make ends meet while being interrogated by the thugs who sees themselves as above them within the social class, bossing them around and controlling what they do. I really liked humanity and paper balloons confined setting as they help add and deliver on the discomfort and harsh lifestyle that the poor have to go through, and Yamanaka was able to make the best out of his location choice. The limited enclosed space adds to the restraint of the characters metaphorically, seemingly showing us viewers, no matter how hard they try, they will still be stuck and unable to move forward in life, crammed within the overcrowded slums. You feel like everything is closing in, especially when the camera takes us outside of the slums, where everything is wide and spacious. Whenever we were inside a tatami room, I came to notice that the camera was almost always placed on the floor. In Japan, sitting upright on the floor is common. Therefore, when the camera is placed on the floor, it captures every dimension within the room, making it feel like you are there in the room with the characters. If the tatami rooms had tables and chairs, placing the camera on the floor may not have the same impact. On top of that, medium and wide shots are utilized to help capture all the characters movements. Both technique choices allow every shot to feel grounded and tangible, and they help add a layer of realness to every shot, every frame, as if you were placed there to observe the characters in real life. Yamanaka also chooses to keep his camera mostly stable, adding to the overall theme of the story. The poor are living in a stagnant lifestyle and are unable to venture out of it. Their choice will always be limited. The grounded aspect can clearly be seen as having influenced Yasujiro Ozu, as most of his work incorporate low angle static shots to capture his family dramas. Now, let's talk about the characters, the key aspect of this film. As mentioned before, we follow mostly two characters, the barber and the ronin. However, the same belief seems to circle the entire village. They all seem to have accepted the fact that no matter what, they would never be able to fit in among the rest of the society. Everyone has their own way of dealing with such situation, and as portrayed within the film, none of them are effective or healthy, but that seems to be their only option when dealing with the situation. Some try to protect their pride, some will try to gain something out of it by any means necessary, even if it means doing something immoral, and others may choose avoidance as a way of self-protection. These methods can be seen detrimental, however, the characters still attempt them as it seems to be their last and only resort. Shinzo, the character that plays the barber, the go-getter of the bunch, scrapes by with what he has. As a side hustle, he attempts to run an underground casino, only to be constantly shut down by the thugs and threatened with violence. All he wanted was to make a little extra earning, but for that, he was constantly terrorized or having his properties destroyed. Shinzo also carries a snarky grin wherever he goes, which is also a reason why he's always getting himself in trouble and in altercations that lead to violence. However, Shinzo refuses to allow his pride to get hurt 
hurt. He's going to figure out a way to fight back no matter what. Mori, on the other hand, a ronin, is another character who attempts to seek a better life by seeking a job opportunity from his deceased father's former master, only to be constantly ignored and rejected harshly. Instead of standing up for himself, he takes the verbal abuse and assaults. He chooses to look the other way as he's afraid to fight back. Although Mori never breaks down on camera, you feel how broken he is inside. He carries a plastic <laughs> smile wherever he goes, and whenever he's discarded by others, he shrugs it off with that smile of his. Yet you can tell as every day goes by, a bit of him disappears along the way. Other characters sprinkled throughout the film also struggles to find unhealthy ways to cope and deal with such situations, but not as extreme as our two main characters. Yamanaka manages to bring out the best in his characters, and you feel their pain and emotion, even when they're not directly expressed on screen. You really do feel how tiring and hopeless they are, even underneath their laugh and jokes, which I'm going to talk about next. You feel like the jokes are there as a protection, to hide their vulnerability, and everyone in the slum seems to do it as well. Just to clarify, although this film has its fair share of laughs, it is not a comedy. The comedic aspect here helps add a layer of authenticity. The delivery of little jokes helps make the dialogue more natural and contained, and adds a little touch to how the poor attempt everything to stay positive. For them, just a little laugh and joke aids them in living their harsh lifestyle. Some scenes are funny, but it also comes off as sad for me. As for them, just a little laugh and joke within the community keeps them going, at least that's how I see it. Although I found this film to be a haunting portrayal of the suffering of the lower class and what they have to go through, humanity and paper balloons didn't seem to have much to offer, other than stating the obvious, and it doesn't quite smoothly pave its way towards its shocking ending. Yamanaka is clearly aware of some of society's issues and those that are placed at the bottom and the hardship they have to go through. He was able to capture that in a very humane watch, but it doesn't quite go beyond that for me and doesn't offer much beyond that. It's like, this is happening, this is the issue, and that's it. The only example I can think of off the top of my head that really made me sick and portray what it's like to live in a marginalized society is Salam Bombay, a film I absolutely love. Salam Bombay manages to place us in a main character's shoes, the kid, and pushes him to the extreme, placing him in some of the worst possible situations, which allows it to pave its way towards an ending that is still scarred in my head, making it one of the most powerful films regarding the oppressed population. Yes, Humanity in Paper Balloon is a painful and haunting watch, but it doesn't quite have the same impact, especially the ending. After watching it, it didn't elicit a strong enough response where I was like, we need to make a change now. The ending also seemed to be too abrupt, and not enough seeds were planted to lead the way towards an ending that I believe could have been more impactful. The first 30 minutes also struggled to balance its characters, as there were a lot. Yamanaka tried to allow every village member to shine, but the film is only an hour and 20 minutes. With such a short runtime, Yamanaka could have focused solely on its message and the character's development. Humanity in Paper Balloons is far from a bad film. In fact, I had tons of fun watching it. I just wish its message was stronger, and that director Yamanaka would dive slightly deeper into the film's core message, and allow the film to smoothly pave its way towards its haunting ending, with the help of more implications on the hardship the poor have to go through on a daily basis. Humanity in Paper Balloons is a humane film that I highly suggest you to give a watch if you're able to find a copy. Right now Criterion has a restored version, that's the version I watched. Give it a go. However, if you decide to watch a more impactful film regarding marginalized society, check out Salam Bombay instead. Just a heads up, that film is not an easy watch whatsoever. I'm sure there are other great films out there or ones that I've seen that cover similar topics, but Salam Bombay really left a mark on me. Go check out Humanity in Paper Balloons as it is a film well deserved to be preserved as it paved the way for cinema as we know it today. Check out Salam Bombay as well if you're able to, or just watch anything that you like. As for the film medium, the sky's the limit and there's everything for everyone. Have you seen Humanity in Paper Balloons? Do you plan to see it? If you did, what did you think of it? Comment below and let me know, and as always, subscribe for your next travel ticket.